Welcome to the war from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, send it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Well, on today's episode of Cavalcade of America, we'll take a look at the uh, service of paratroopers in this episode uh, uh, from April 26th of 1943. The title is Soldiers in High Boots. The Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont, maker of better things for better living through chemistry, presents John Hall in Soldiers in High Boots. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont. Tonight, we present John Hall as the star of a new radio play, Soldiers in High Boots, written by Peter Lyon, especially for Cavalcade. Our play tonight is based on exploits of the paratroopers, daredevils of the infantry. Later in the program, you will hear Cavalcade's special guest, Captain John T. Berry of the 508th Parachute Infantry, who will speak from Washington. Starring John Hall as Private Jefferson Smith, we present Soldiers in High Boots on the Cavalcade of America. Your order is to jump. That's one, keep going, pass now, jump two, three, four, five, six. Come on, come on, jump, soldier. I I, I can't, sir. What's your name? Smith? Okay, get back out of the way, back in the cabin there. Okay, next, keep coming there, jump. Come in. Yes? Private Smith, sir. Company D. Doctor, there, there's something I wanted to ask you. Yes, ask away. Well, sir, I, I thought you being a doctor. Yes? Well, I think I can guess what's on your mind, Smith. You failed to jump from the plane this morning. That it? Has the jump master reported that to you already? I don't even know who your jump master was, soldier. But I get visits like yours at least once a week. Well, then, can you tell me what's wrong with me, Doctor? And what to do about it? Well, I can tell you what's wrong with you, all right. But as for the cure, well, that's another matter. Yeah, but all the guys in my company, they they got me tagged as yellow. And I'm willing to take any one of them on to prove otherwise. Well, you wouldn't prove anything that way, Smith? No, I guess not. Well, then, why don't I jump like the others? Acrophobia. It's a Greek word. It means fear of high places. Acrophobia, huh? Probably something in your childhood caused it. You were frightened by some high place or other. A psychoanalyst could take care of it if it needs to be taken care of. Yeah, but the guys in my company, they they think I'm scared. (laughs) There's nothing to be ashamed of, soldier. It doesn't mean you're a coward. But why do I freeze up just when I'm supposed to jump? (gasps) You act as though you were the only man who ever froze up on a parachute jump. Don't worry so much about it. (laughs) Matter of fact, I'm the same way. You couldn't get me to jump out of one of those planes? Yeah, but look, if I don't jump this afternoon, I'm out of the paratroops. Then make your jump. Yell Geronimo the way the other boys do. And don't worry about it. That's the worst thing you can do, worry. If you start getting worried about fear, you'll bump into another long Greek word. Phobophobia. What's that? Fear of being afraid. That's really a nasty one. Steer clear of that one. Now go on. Make your jump. You'll be okay. Hey, Farmer, how much longer we got before the afternoon jump? We ought to get started pretty soon, Takes. We're supposed to go up around a quarter after. Hey, Mac, if you gotta play that thing, play something cheerful. 
say. Who'll take a bet on Smitty? Smitty? What about him? Oh, you know. He went up on the second flight this morning and he wouldn't make his jump. Yeah, he froze up like an icicle. Takes us when you're up 5,000 feet and you got a jump. You got a right to be scared. Yeah. If you say you're not scared yourself, Texas, you're just a plain a lion. So, who'll take a bet on whether he jumps this afternoon? Well, if he don't jump this afternoon, they'll jump him right back into the infantry. Two times and out. That's what the colonel told us. Don't worry, boys. He'll jump all right. Oh, so I have no takers, huh? I'm surrounded by citizens who have no sporting instinct. All close students of the dollar. Hey, shut up, will you? Here he comes now. Hmm? Yeah, he must be going up again, all right. He's got to shoot. All right, come on. We better hurry. Oh, it's my misfortune to have in my platoon nobody but citizens who figure that anything involving humans is six to five against. <laughs> Well, that's us. Free ticket for everybody, all the way up and all the way down again. Well, boys, after this trip, we'll all be paratroopers. I hope, I hope, I hope. Hi, Smitty. Hi, Farmer. I uh, missed your jar. You feeling okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Why not? Well, the way you usually tie on the old feed bag, I, I was just wondering. You're thinking about this morning, eh? I know what's on your mind. You figured you'd come over and talk with me, keep my mind off this morning. Well, listen, Farmer. Get back with your pals or start thinking about your farm back in Iowa. I'm okay. Sure, kid, sure. Never mind me and I don't want to talk. Okay, Smitty, have it you. I tell you, I do so remember something about a sparrow. It's in the Bible. Oh, it's a funny no, thing. Right What's funny? There. Well, on the ground, that big lug is all guts. Oh, yeah. Getting him, uh, get him up here a few thousand feet, and he tries to remember sure. stuff out of the Bible. That's right, that's it. A sparrow falls anywhere in the world, and God knows about it and can put out his hand to keep it from harm. You know, Farmer, I'm not scared to jump. I got it all reasoned out, but, but I look down. I know. I get sick. I don't get scared. I get sick. Yeah, sure, that, that happens to lots of guys. As soon as I hear the jump master give the order, then, then I freeze up. Oh, you'll get over that. You get so you like it after a while. All right, you guys. Everybody, stand up. Fix your ripcords to the guy line. Remember the sparrow, Smitty. No talking in the ranks, sir. Now, when I give the order to jump, I want you guys to start jumping. I want all 18 of you out of this plane inside of 10 seconds. That means no delays from any of you. Any guy who hesitates, I'll pull him right back out of the way. Open exit door. Oh, I'm right back here, kid. Okay, jump. Giraffe! 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 Keep moving forward, Smitty. Never stop, see? My hands. Giraffe! My hands, Farmer. Giraffe! You should see me shaking, kid. Giraffe! I... What? Giraffe! 15, 16, I... 17. I... 17. I... Go ahead, soldier. I don't think I can, sir. Go on, Smitty. All right, step back. Out of the way. No. No. No, I'm gone. Geronimo! Well, that's about all I've got to say, men. Those of you who took the second jump yesterday completed your training. You're now full-fledged paratroopers. Now, one more thing. As of this moment, all leaves and liberties are canceled. Report to your quarters and prepare for immediate embarkation. Full field equipment. You have exactly one hour. I'd like to tell you where you're going, but unfortunately, I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. Anyway, you're a fine bunch of paratroopers, and wherever you go, I know you'll do a good job. Now, good luck and good hunting. Company dismissed. <laughs> well, Smitty, old boy, we, we do it. Yeah, we're in, Farmer. Oh, and look, fella, thanks for yesterday. Oh, don't thank me, Smitty. Nobody pushed you. You hey, jumped. Gentlemen, gentlemen, I have a little sporting proposition. Five will get you ten now. Hey, Texas. Texas, come over and get in on this. Oh, you got another sure proposition for us to bet on, Mac? What's the bet? Well, now, first, let me ask you a question. Where do you think the high command has decided to use, utilize our talents, huh? Well, I got a hunch we're going to be heading across that blue Pacific. Ha <laughs> ha. How about you, Farmer? What do you say? Well, I got different dope. Understand there's going to be a little excitement up around Alaska. Considering the way they've been training us, I think it's going to be Iceland. Okay, boys, it's a bet. Now, I'll tell you, gentlemen, where, where we're going. Africa. Sunny Africa. Yes, sir. <laughs> Africa where the sun always shines. Rain. Is that all it does in England? Rain? Hey, Smitty, you got another cigarette? Sure, here you are, fella. Look at that rain. 
too wet even to go down to the pub for a beer. Who's got the dice? Oh, relax, Texas. I'll bet it's not raining down in Africa anyway. Yeah, Africa. I thought we were heading straight for Africa, Mac. We've been in England two months. Oh, bye. I wonder how our old outfit's doing. You know, what I wonder is why we didn't get to go to Africa. Well, they got their reasons why we didn't go south, Farmer. Yeah, such as which? Well, I, uh, I'd rather not say. What do you mean by that, Texas? Oh, no hard feelings, Smitty, but you're the guy who went chicken on a jump once. Figures on your record. Texas. Why don't you keep your yap shut, Texas? Well, now, listen, Mac, you and the farmer both agreed that maybe Smitty was the reason we didn't get to go. Still got that on your mind, eh, Texas? You can call it a mine. Well, what about it, Smitty? You sure you wouldn't freeze up again? Cut it out, Texas. They aren't keeping all of us here just because of Smitty. You said not all of us, Farmer. You mean you, you figure that's why I'm here? Well, Smitty, it probably is on your record that you didn't jump once, but... Well, if wouldn't... that's the case, they wouldn't... Wouldn't they throw me out of the paratroops? Well, that's reasonable. Ah, the trouble with you guys, you got nothing better to do than sit around and dream up these for why we haven't seen any action. Did you ever stop to wonder why they were so anxious to teach us how to ski? Well, we weren't the only guys they trained to ski, Smitty. I'm not saying we were. But the four of us, we're all supposed to be pretty hot at skiing. So long as we're all figuring out why we didn't go to Africa, I'll make my bet it's because they're going to send us in the other direction. Gosh, Smitty, do you really think so? Well, how do you figure? Oh, fine. Now we're the second front. Hey, Mama! Norway, huh? Mm. It's cold country. I like it hot. Mm, we ought to know where yet. It's just one way of looking at it. Attention. Private Smith? Yes, sir. Carter? Yes, sir. McElroy? Yes, sir. Ramsey? Yes, sir. You're all to report to the CO at once. Never mind sprucing up. He wants you there in a hurry. Is this? Does this mean maybe we'll get... CO will tell you. Get going. At ease, men. I want you to know Captain Olaf. That's his first name. Never mind about his last name. Oh, these are the men, Colonel. These are the men. I'm glad to see all of you. Thank you, sir. Hello. All right. Captain Olaf's commission is with one of our allies. I'm going to turn you over to his command. That is, if you're willing. What? Hmm? We don't understand, sir. I said, if you're willing. Because I want to make clear to you all that if you're transferred to Captain Olaf's command, it is on a voluntary basis. Let me outline what is on our minds. We're asking for volunteers among the men who are trained as paraski troopers. The mission is extremely dangerous. Maybe a little six to five against? <laughs> Possibly. But in any event, the objective is the destruction of certain key military installations on the continent. Norway. The second front. Second front? I don't know anything about the second front. And it's not your province to guess about it. Nor mine. Maybe a certain country will be the scene of an invasion. If so... And your chances of coming back from this mission with a whole skim are somewhat enhanced. If not, your chances are, well, slim. Either way you look at it, they're not very good. You know enough to make your decision now. You want a little time to decide? Count me in, sir. Yeah, me too, sir. I'm in this, sir. Smith? Huh? Oh, uh, count me in, sir. Supply sergeant will issue your special equipment at once. You'll have one hour to write letters or whatever you want to do. That's all. Now we're going to do something. Oh, this is a good feeling, yeah. When will we be able to see something, Captain? Uh, some land, I mean. Oh, is there much visibility? Should be. We left all the rain down in England. Well, then we should see some land pretty soon, if we are not too high up. Hey. Say, look at that sky over there. Oh, yeah? What, uh, where do you mean, Smitty? There. There, over there. Oh, yes. Hey, look at that. I will ask the navigator. Hey, that must be some bonfire, huh? Uh, could that be Berlin? Berlin's pretty far away, isn't it? I don't know what it is, but it's sure burning. It's Hamburg. All pilots finished their raid there about half an hour ago. Hope we can do as good a job where we're going. You are listening to John Hall as Smitty in Soldiers in High Boots, a new radio play on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont. As our play continues, Smitty, the farmer, Mac, and Texas, together with Captain Olaf, have set out on their first mission as paraski troopers. A fast army plane is speeding them toward continental Europe to a destination known only to Captain Olaf. As the plane drones through the night, the four men wait impatiently for the order that will let them see action at last. Check your safety belts, men. What's the matter, Captain? 
nothing, I hope. The pilot just called me to say he saw some ships down below. We are hoping they're not Nazis. What if they are? Well, then we'd have a committee to welcome us as we float down, perhaps. I suppose we ought to be glad we're up in these clouds. Man, I'm glad. Yeah. Only I'd like to get a look at the country. Listen, you wouldn't be able to see much. It's just beginning to get light. Uh, where's Olaf? I've been having a little shut-eye. Oh, no, he's up with a navigator. Telling him where to go, I guess. Mm, cold. It's cold up here. Who's got a cigarette? All right, everybody. Get ready. We jump in a few minutes. Jump? Into those clouds? Well, we go down to 2,000 feet, Phil. You should be glad of those clouds, my friend. Yes, I am, but... But what? Nothing, sir. Nothing. Come on, let's check the supply chutes. No. When you land, you go straight to the supply chute, yeah? And I will give the orders at that time. Good. You're leveling off. Any second now. You all check your chutes? All checked, yes, sir. All ready, Captain Olaf. For the 2,000, you don't go any lower. Right. Thank you. Not a bit. Good luck. And good hunting. Thanks again. Oh, makes it door. One, two, three, four in that order. I shall go last. Your order is to jump. That means you're first, Smitty. Dive away, kid. No. No, you go first. I, I'll jump after you. Please, you must hurry. Go ahead, Smitty. I... Oh, my... My hands. Come after me, Smitty. Gerard! Sorry, Captain. This happened before with Smith. Gerard! Here I go. Gerard! Uh, I'm all right now. Gerard! Goodbye, Captain Olaf. See you again, Lieutenant. And thanks. All right, now, to business. The power station is that way, about four and a half miles. I know all the trails through here. Now, you will follow me. You all have your assignments, huh? I think we're... Oh, one thing, Smithy. Yes, sir? You were to carry a share of the explosives and guard the side entrance to the power plant while Mac attended to setting us fuses, right? That's right. Yes, no. You will divide your share of the explosives among us. In Texas? Yeah. You will take over the task of guarding the entrance. That will leave the rear entrance unguarded till after I can return from the basement, but we'll have to take that chance. It's arranged, no? But... But what am I going to Sorry, do? Sorry, Smitty, those are orders. That's all for now. You mean I, I have no orders? That's right. Don't worry too much, soldier. Uh, just at first, uh, perhaps it would be well if you stayed right at my hand all the time, eh? Until I tell you. All right, come on now. We've got to hurry. The Nazi changed their guard at the power plant in less than an hour. There we are now. Quickly. Fuse number one. Check. Right. It is set. Fuse number two. Anything I can do to help, Captain? No, 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 thanks. Check, right. It is set. Fuse number three. Check, right. Believe me, sir. I'm perfectly... These are wonderful gadgets, these mechanical fuses, no? <laughs> I hope Mark is having as easy a time with his three charges I have with mine. No. The last look around. The two sentries. Dead and unmourned. Do you want me to get over to the rear entrance, sir? I, I still have my submachine no gun. No need to, I should think. Just imagine what this will do to the Nazis, Smith. And hydroelectric plants supplying energy for every mine, every mill, every plant, for the whole area. It's a good night's work. <laughs> all right, all is well. We have precisely six minutes to get out of the way of the explosion. Come along now. I hope so. You, you won't think I... Oh, good. There's your friend Texas. Now we pick up Mac and the farmer. <laughs> Quick, don't. Everything okay by you, Captain? Yes, sir. What was that shot I heard? I don't know. Where are they orders? They were right behind me. There they are. What's the matter? They're running. Mac, he's hurt. Must have missed one of the sentries. Nick Mac in my leg. Oh. I'm okay. We got to get going out of here. I'll make it five m minutes till the whole mountainside gets blown up. Did anybody hear your shot? What about a Nazi sentry? He beat it. Come on, we better do the same. Get on, get on. Dirty shame, and after such a good beginning, too. I think I can see what they've set up their machine gun, sir. How about I try to work around the side and. It won't up... work, Texas. They shoot you before you get ten steps. Say. Where's Smitty? Well, he's right with me. Where is he? Huh? I was hoping I was wrong about that guy. I never saw him at all. We've got to get out of here. We must make a move. We can't just sit here behind this escarpment waiting for an explosion. Less than three minutes to go, sir. Oh, what are those dogs up to now? Well, they're just taking pot shots, I think. No, sir, they're not. They're shooting at... It's Smitty. What? Where? See? He's crawling along down by that big pipe. He's got grenades with him. See him? Oh, there he is. See? Get down, you fool. Get down. Look out, Smitty. Oh, 
can't make it. I think he can. He's just got that ten yards to go in the clear, and then he can really toss that grenade. Oh, Smitty. You know how to make his break in just a second, though. There he goes. Run, Smitty, run! They got him. No, no, he's not down. Look. He's still got the grenade. One, two, three, throw it! He doesn't dare how to throw it back at him. There. Come on, everybody. Get to him as fast as you can. Come on. All right, duck down your dice. Keep your heads low. I don't like this. Hurry. Yeah. Dave. All the Nazi stayed. Smitty. Smitty, you all right? Yeah, he's still alive. Here, here, help yeah, me. Come on, Smitty, old boy. Smitty. Don't be doped, you guys. You gotta get away from here before the place blows up. Nah, don't try to talk, kid. Here, Texas, you take his legs. Huh? Careful. No, I... no, no. Get out of here, do you hear me? You can't do anything for me now. We ain't got much time left, Captain. Get out of here, all you guys. You haven't got time to carry, carry me. He's right. <laughs> I'm sorry I went chicken on the jump, guys. Will, will you shake my hand, Smitty? Thanks. Come on, we gotta go through those streets and down the hill. So long, Smitty. So long, Farmer. Remember the sparrow. Thank you, John Hall. A little later in the program, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Hall will return to the microphone to introduce our special guest, Captain John T. Berry. Meanwhile, here is Gane Whitman with a story of chemistry at work in war. Tonight we bring you a story of chemistry on the home front. But the story begins, as most stories do these days, with chemistry and speeding a job for the Army. They've just finished painting the inside of a big new bomber plant in Ohio. You can get some idea of how big it is from the fact that the job took over 20,000 gallons of paint. But there's another fact that's more interesting than that. The paint was applied at the rate of eight or 900 gallons a day. Now that's fast. Wartime paint jobs call for speed. One of the things that make great painting speed possible is a new kind of paint. Resin oil emulsion paint. DuPont Speed Easy resin oil emulsion paint was tested against two competitive paints at the bomber plant in Ohio. Speed Easy was selected. This new wall finish does the job in fewer coats and dries more rapidly than old style paints. It gives excellent light reflection. Because Speed Easy was formulated originally for use in the home as a one coat finish for wallpaper and other interior walls, we think you'd like to know what it is and how it works. Everybody knows the old saying that oil and water won't mix. DuPont Speed Easy disproves that saying because while you mix Speed Easy with water, what stays on your walls after the water dries is an oil paint. The secret of this wartime paint development is what chemists call a homogenizing agent. I'll explain. Paint pigments, the compounds that give paint its colors, are usually ground in oil. The oil encloses each pigment particle in a coating. The ordinary paint that you put on your wall is a mixture of pigment and oil. With Speed Easy, the pigments are ground in oil, and then a homogenizing agent is added, which makes oil and water mix. The water evaporates. The pigment in its resin oil binder is left on your wall. The cold water tap in your kitchen gives you the only thinner you need. And every gallon of this DuPont wall finish gives you a gallon and a half of ready-to-use paint, enough for an average room. What's more, DuPont Speed Easy covers most surfaces in one coat, even over figured wallpaper or discolored plaster walls. You can paint over practically any interior wall surface. Wallpaper, painted and unpainted plaster walls, brick, cement, or building tile. In less than an hour, Speed Easy is dry. Paint your walls in the morning, and by afternoon, your furniture, draperies, and pictures can be put back in place. Another advantage is that Speed Easy's flat, smooth finish can be kept clean with just soap and water. So interested is the government in encouraging people to protect America's $80 billion property investment that it wants people to make necessary improvements, such as plumbing repairs, roofing, and painting. Repairs that will keep your property in good condition. Not only from the standpoint that this may be a long war, not only from the standpoint of common sense, 
but because America is a land of homes. We don't think of our houses as a mere roof over our heads. We think of them as homes, and we want them to be well-kept homes for reasons of efficiency and cheerful homes for reasons of morale. A product of chemical science, this new wall finish deserves a place among the many DuPont better things for better living through chemistry. And now the star of tonight's cavalcade, John Hall. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. In presenting tonight's cavalcade, DuPont not only salutes an heroic branch of the Army, but also those brave men who gave their lives. In Washington tonight is one who suffered wounds. He is Captain John T. Barry of the Airborne Command, which invaded Africa. Captain Barry brings us a first-hand report of the largest flight by air ever made by paratroopers and the action which followed. It is my privilege to introduce Captain Barry. Come in, Washington. The paratroopers spearheaded the African operation with our objective, the capture of a strategic airfield in Algeria. Our first landing was relatively uneventful. The airport was already in friendly hands. But we were immediately sent on another mission and were attacked in flight by enemy fighter planes. We suffered our first casualty in this operation. One week later, we were on our way to Tunisia and jumped there to occupy another aerodrome, which is now used by our Air Force as an advanced base of operations. On December the 1st, our unit fought along with other infantry units at Fayed Pass and captured the pass in two days, taking a number of German and Italian prisoners. In this report, I have been able to outline only briefly the operation of the first American paratroopers in North Africa. What our men did then will be fully recorded by history. What I will remember longest, however, will not be the military achievement of these paratroopers, but the courage and determination of the men who fought these battles. Next Saturday, Count McCall, North Carolina, will be dedicated in honor of Private John T. McCall, one of the first paratroopers to die in the African action. The memory of this hard-fighting, freckle-faced American voice serves as an inspiration to all of us in the Airborne Command. Camp McCall is the first training center established by the Army to be devoted exclusively for the training of airborne troops. The paratroopers who are carrying on in Africa and those who will follow in increasing numbers from Camp McCall to combat airs throughout the world are determined to avenge the death of Private McCall, and you can be sure they will. Thank you, Captain Barry. Ladies and gentlemen, you have just heard Captain John T. Barry, Cavalcade's special guest for this evening, who spoke to you from Washington. They flew the Atlantic in a bomber. They were attacked in the air and on land, but like real troopers, they carried on, performing day and night for the men of our armed forces. You've read about them in the headlines, Kay Francis, Martha Ray, and Mitzi Mayfair, three Hollywood stars who will appear on Cavalcade next week in a salute to the entertainment world, Soldiers in Grease Paint. Be with us again next week when Cavalcade presents Kay Francis, Martha Ray, and Mitzi Mayfair in Soldiers in Grease Paint, a true account of three girls who risked their lives many times to entertain our men on the fighting fronts. Cavalcade is pleased to advise its listeners that John Hall is currently starring in the universal Technicolor success, White Savage. The musical score of tonight's program was composed and directed by Robert Armbruster. This is John Heaston sending best wishes from Cavalcade sponsor, the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. This program came to you from Hollywood in Washington, D.C. This is the National Broadcasting Company. That will do it for today. If you uh, have a comment, email me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. I welcome your story or that of loved ones who served during World War II. Ken Curlin provides our opening theme music, kencurlin.com. I am your host, Adam Graham. This uh, series is provided as a service of the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio, greatdetectives.net.